Hello and welcome to this BIM up session um, on the power pack for Plant 3D. Let's have a look at you know just why plant engineers are using the power pack for Plant 3D to get ahead um, with their design work. Um, my name is Simon Dickinson. Um, I'll be the presenter for today. Uh, I'm actually the product manager for the power pack for Plant 3D, along with our power pack for Revit as well. So the power pack for Plant 3D is quite new. We've um, we released it earlier this year, and um, with new updates coming very very soon. So it's very exciting time, um, for our new power pack for Plant 3D. So what actually is it? Um, so we've developed quite a lot of tools in there. So there's a collection of various different add-ons um, and different tools for Plant 3D. They either fill the gap um, within the standard tools functionality, um, ex or simplify um, the current functionality and basically generally extend its capabilities. Um, the five benefits of, of, of using the power pack for Plant 3D um, for anyone involved in, in, in plant design. You know, there's a wide range of commands in there to aim to boost our productivity, speed things up, make things more efficient, save time. There's absolutely huge time saving. And um, one of my favorite tools is the manufacturing reference tool, which we'll talk about shortly, which saves absolutely huge amounts of time just in day to day operation within plant. You know, the ability to update geometry to see latest changes and revisions. Um, them changes are now moving from hours to minute, minutes, particularly with the manufacturing references um, tool in here. We can easily reference Excel um, to export the current drawing or project pipe support. So all the information in the pipe supports, which is not normally um, easy accessible, we've made them uh, a tool to get the access to that information. And generally, how to save time on the manual data entry when we're putting nominal pipe sizes in, um, specification data, etc. So, jumping straight into some of the tools, you know, um, we have in here the manufacturer reference tool. Um, now, what this allows us to do is quite often when we're working on a uh, a plant project the equipment um, will be getting to supplied to us in various different file formats we might use inventor to edit that file and update it to a standard that we want or more than likely the manufacturer themselves is supplying us their inventor files their solidworks files their katia files um, the manufacturing reference tool will allow us to link that data in but more importantly, once we've um, assimilated that data, so we've basically converted the block to a piece of equipment, we've told it what the equipment is, we've created our pipe connectors in the usual um, way that we would use these um, blocks. If something changed, then unfortunately, we more or less have to start again. So, you know, if, if, if we looked at a typical project with, you know, 150 pieces of equipment, inventor file format in, in SOLIDWORKS or Gatia, you know, when the revisions come in, you know, you're going to save about 30 minutes per revision um, per equipment. You know, save that by three revisions per equipment. You know, by the time we've looked at, you know, the revisions on 150 times three, all of that man hours, that's one and a half man months of time that we can save and because everybody uses this this is a tool that 100 percent of users are actually going to get a benefit out of using you know when we start looking at data automation i mentioned that we've got the ability to export our pipe supports and we can get that information out now although the information is stored within the pipe support itself it's very hard to extract that data so, you know, again, if we're looking at a, a typical project with, you know, say 300 pipe supports, um, you'd spend about five minutes per support documenting the dimensions. Um, you know, 300 pipe supports, five minutes support, that's 25 hours just by running that report once. But as we all know, as we're developing the model, you know, that information is changing. We want to actually have accurate data that we can supply to our fabricators that's going to have the correct support lengths on and they can then start to, you know, run that report off whenever we need it. This is a report that takes a few minutes to run on a big project. So we're looking at another 150 potential of saved hours in there. Um, the ability to update line groups, you know, again, you know, um, 
you know, project with a thousand lines, you know, will have user spending of it, even if you're spending only two minutes per line, um, entering the nominal information, that's 32 hours. Yeah, and that's just entering the data once, you know. Um, hopefully when things change, the, the nominal data will be correct anyway. But 32 hours just in something similar by automating the speed at which we can do that. Um, and again, you know, we've, we've updating the size description. Um, you know, we've got a tool which will automate this. Um, you know, for a catalog with 500 parts, 6,000 sizes, you know, even an advanced Plant 3D user is going to spend about 16 hours typing. Um, and we can fully automate that. Um, there is various other tools that we have in here as well. It's not just about these main tools, which just says massive amounts of times. We have tools in here um, for copying project drawings from separate projects. So we can start in, in our project. Maybe we've got some data in a previous project, which is completely relevant to this one. It's the same setup. You know, we're going to use the same um, information. We can use um, the copy project drawings. We select basically a project that we want to copy the information from. We can then select the drawings. This will allow us to copy not just model drawings, but PNIDs, the authors and the isometrics. So this is very important. The fact that, you know, we've got the ability to transfer all these four different types of drawings. Another one of my favorites, as I mentioned right at the start, uh, one of my other products that I look after is, is Revit and the power pack for Revit. Now, obviously AutoCAD's fine because I'm using pure AutoCAD. I can install the object enabler for plant 3D. AutoCAD doesn't support objects enablers for plant 3D. So therefore, there's no way for me to coordinate any of my plant drawings inside of Revit. Now, this is very important um, in the modern BIM world where, you know, other people are using other packages where we want to coordinate it, etc. Yes, we could use Navisworks, um, but sometimes the designers need the models. So we've got the ability to batch export all of our drawings to plain AutoCAD. Okay, this is really, really nice tool. And of course, um, the other thing that we can do then as well is, as well as exporting this information um, out to, um, to Revit via the AutoCAD format, it also means that we can export this information out to something like 3ds Max, so we can start to do our, our visualizations um, in there as well. And that's not all. There's more. You know, we've got the ability to search our model um, for the PNID numbers. Um, so we can go from the PNID back to the model and see where the information is coming from. We've got the update line groups too. We've got the struct sync actuators. So where we might have a specification for a pump and it is the actuators on it, what we can do is we can actually sync that information automatically. And we also have the ability to force the update size description in there as well. Oh, and did I mention we also have some other modeling tools for listing the part information, updating updating the spec record ID and the part update where we can swap parts in and out where we might have a part that's missing. And just to finish off before we actually jump in and have a look at the software itself, it's coming soon. You know, what you've got to remember is this is a developing product. Already, uh, the you know, we are developing future releases of this and we are always looking at ideas. The best ideas come from you the customers you the users who use this software every single day and you go wouldn't it be good if plant could do this it doesn't quite do it the way that we'd like and it speeds things up so much more if we could automate this process if that's the case and you have an idea please do get in touch with me um, simon.dickinson at greatech.com right without further ado let's jump over into plant and see exactly how the tools work so here we are here in, in inside of um, Plant 3D. Um, there's the, the sample model that comes with Plant 3D, slightly cut down version just to make it a little bit quicker um, for processing the data in here. And as you can see at the top here, we have our power pack ribbon that we've integrated into the interface um, with a series of tools, as I previously mentioned. Um, the first tool I want to show you is actually the um, the export supports because this is, is is very good so you know if we um let's just go and create a support let's find uh, the sort of type of support that i'm after something like this you know we uh, might want to place a couple of these okay and then you know let's just um 
modify these. I know I'm not quite how we would do it, but you get the idea. Now, all the information about the pipe supports um, can be found. Um, let's have a look at the properties. Yep, so we've got all the information in here and we've got the thumbnails, etc. We've got the heights of the legs, we've got all the dimensions. Um, this information is not actually available um, anywhere else in the data manager or things like that. And we need to get this information out um, for our fabrication information. So what I can do is I'm coming to here, um, click on export supports. I get the choice, I can do the current drawing of the current project or the entire project. So let's just do, just make it simple, just do a current drawing on here. It will let me choose where I want to save that. So we'll save it into um, not that particular project. It's the wrong project to, to make it easy. Let's just stick on my desktop and click save. There's already one there, we'll just overwrite that. Um, so that's gonna go away now and it's gonna export all the supports out for that. And what it will do is once it's finished exporting the supports, um, it will actually open up Excel. So it will open up that directly as soon as that export's been done. As you can see, might be able to see the cursor's flickering away just as it processes this data. Here we go. Excel has automatically opened. Let's pull my Excel file across from my from here. And it has created a different tab for each different roller. Okay, so there's one. If I go to here, this will be the roller that I've just placed. As you can see, all the different types and all the exported information regarding the depths and the information that we actually need in there and the different heights. Saves absolute hours and hours of time. Okay, so we'll close that down. There's our exports. So we've got that data and that data sorted. And the next tool that I'd like to show you is one of my favorites, which is the manufacturer reference. So if I click on manufacturer reference, we get this dialog box. It um, could be deemed a little bit like the, the XREF manager that I've got open here. Let's we'll close that XREF manager down. And what we can do in here is I can import my manufacturer information. Now what we've actually got in here, and this is the reason why this is quite clever, is this will allow me to link in data from Inventor, from Katia, uh, from Ocketeer, sorry, and from SolidWorks, and it will link it in an intelligent way. So if we choose, let's just, um, let me just find where my Inventor file is for this project. So come into here, related files, testing. And here you can see I've got a couple of IPTs. Got a version two in here and a version one. So what I can do, I can choose the part that I want, and this will now link it in. Okay, so we'll just let this link in nicely. It's reading it, and here we go. It's got this, and you can see there's various information. Notice the status up to date. This is quite important because if if it detects that the the that we've got a revision, it will know to change that few steps that we need to do just to complete it. So let's just close that down for the time being. Um, here we go. It's coming in the inventor coordinate system because obviously the inventor quite like inventor users quite like to have Z to mean something else. So let's just give that the right axis. Okay. Um, so it's, it's now set up as a block. Um, let's just go to the properties. Yeah, it doesn't currently understand what that is. It's just a block. We still need to do the usual. So we still need to go to um, create our equipment. Okay. Sorry, convert. It would actually help. Yeah, so I want to convert the equipment. And we'll convert that to a vessel. Okay. Yeah, so we've got that. Set an insertion point. Okay. We can put the tag information in there. I think that's the next one I need. Cool. So tag information, okay. So we've now got the object. We can then start to, let me just zoom in on that. 
we can then start to um, do the usual where we can add in right, so let me do that let's just add the nozzle in the other way so we'll add in our nozzles okay so we, we still need to do the the the, the usual oh, yeah there we go that's fine we still need to add the nozzles in as we would normally do um, the one thing that we don't have to do is if anything changes we will not have to do this again this is a one-time operation and this is where the uh, manufacturer's reference really starts to add value yes we still have to do this at the start of our project um, but once that's been done this it, it's sorted yeah okay so we don't need to worry about that afterwards so we can set this at once and then if that changes then we're okay on that okay and um, what I might just do is let me just um, go to my file Explorer we'll, we'll we'll simulate an update in fact just before I do that let's just hit save make sure that we've actually saved what we do I can simulate the change in my Explorer so we'll just go to Back into my related files for this project, to my testing. Let's um, rename this one old, and then we'll rename this one back. To that. Okay. Now. It will only update when if I force it or if I if I restart um, the project. So we'll close this down in a second. Before I actually do that, under the power pack, sorry, under home, if I go to my data manager, in here you'll notice on my pipelines my nominal spec is all blank. My nominal size is all blank. Obviously, it's a big job to update that data. Now, what we can do is if I close this project down and start the project up again, it will check the specs and try and work out um, what the nominal spec and nominal size should be or I can actually run it live in a project we have up the, the update line groups um, so I can basically update force an update of a line group you see here there's 160 line to 162 line groups that is scanning and it will try and propagate that data based on that it will automatically run that every time you open a model so even if that data is actually missing as you're drawing um, when you launch it will try and update that if we just go back into our data manager as you can see where that data is available it's now propagated that that is a lot of information that you will be spending manually typing in and cross-referencing we can actually force an update based on the specifications and it will actually work out if there's a normal spec available for that on the nominal size as well again incredibly powerful okay um so what i can then do is with the update for this let's just um do a close save the changes yes so obviously updated on my um my line groups we can close that down and then i can open up the drawing again just um, wait for it to scan through it will attempt to update the line groups there's some authored components and the pending status manufacturing reference has changed now I can actually directly open the manufacturer's reference from the error message um, or the warning if you like not so much an error message and as you can see here, it's scanned and it now knows there is an updated version. Obviously, it's telling me that this tank's updated. Now, what we can do, which I do really like, is if I go zoom to, yeah, and this is really useful if you've got a big model, you know, you've got a lot of references. With zoom to selected, if I click on the object, you can see it will actually zoom me directly into there. Yeah, oops. Um, obviously, um, I can update just one. Let's update all, just in case. So this will actually update that. And what we should see is, there we go. It's actually now made into changes in there. Okay. 
Um, the one thing to remember, obviously I didn't put connection on this one that's changed, um, but here the only thing that it doesn't do, which I just need to be aware of, is um, the connector is slightly in the wrong place, but we can always, we can choose to edit that. I can change the location, change, select the new point. Okay, and that's updated um, my nozzle as well. So really useful, very little change. It already knows that that's a vessel. It's gonna keep the same um, tag number, all the things that we wouldn't get if we weren't using the manufacturer's reference. So again, so much time saved in that as well. So let's close them windows down. Let's close that one down. Okay. Come back into here. So we have got various other tools in here. Now, the one thing that is quite clever is the ability to copy um, our project drawings. So I can come into here. I can choose to copy project drawings. Now, the way that this works is the first thing I need to do is select the project that I want to copy from. OK, um, so in this case, I have got a, another project which is stored on here. Um, obviously, I could use um, a, a collaboration project. Um, for those of you that are not aware of where that's stored, if you actually go to your username and app data, and we go to, let me double check this, I think it's local Autodesk um, Plant 3D, there we go, collaboration catch, and then any of the collaboration projects you have actually got where it caches the files. So we can go in there. In this case, I'm just going to go to this challenge project here. Select the project XML. That is now set. I can now select drawings. Okay. So now notice before I go into here that I can select PNIDs, models, authors, or isometrics. And, and it understands if I went into the into here I could select the say the PNID and we can select each of these in turn so we select each one as we want so you know the authors uh, DWG has got the author one in there and we can also select our isometrics okay so spool A2 I think I've got some in here no it's not the A2 one it is the final A2. It would actually help the final A2. That's one. There we go. And I can all do this because it's done dot two, so I know it's far across. And we can also select um, models as well. So now I could say the example layout. And we can start to reuse that data. Click OK. Now we'll then load all them in. And it will copy these across. Okay, there we go. Um, it also creates um, an, an export as well. So it'll actually create an export report and tell you the ones that have copied across, all successful, so we can see if anything's happened. And then under author graphics, yeah, the author one has been added in. Um, under my ISOs, my ISO uh, final A2, It'll have been added in there as well. So you know, it's copying these across. So a really, really powerful feature to actually better reuse them. And if I go to the PNIDs, there's the PNID that was is a very simple one, but that's the PNID that's been copied across from the other um, project. So really useful to be able to copy across them and reuse that information. Um, one of my other nice tools in here that I like is let's just change um, when it wakes up yo mom let's change over to this project yes I know yes we'll make us change our set settings uh, save our save our settings our drawings And let's move over to this project. Yes, save that one as well, please. Let's give it a chance to 
wake up it'll be resyncing the files so in here we have got um, example layouts etc in here so let's just pull this up what we have here is we've got the copy project drawing so this is this will allow us to batch export all of our drawings to native dwg now this is extremely useful as i mentioned earlier where we're trying to get into a product that doesn't have the object enablers um, for plant 3d and unfortunately there's quite a lot of products where we might want to get this information across particularly in a bim workflow you know where we want to link it into um, another package such as revit um, 3ds max maybe we're trying to get a dwg to um, someone who a practice where the building that's going to surround this in this um, plant is using something like archicad so we can get actually in a format um set up and this is always useful um this is actually the first time i've opened this it's fresh um so it's actually saying that it's not configured um, for the power pack so this is useful if you ever see this it will check to make sure that any of the extra parameters that we actually need for the power pack to run a setup what we can do is we can simply just click on that or we can run the command um, which is the power pack setup this will then run power pack plant 3d startup sorry for command and then what will that this will do is it will add the additional parameters that we actually need in the for the the additional tools to run okay so it will surely come in and it will tell us that obviously it's detected the missing columns because it's using the power pack and if we give it a couple of seconds it will actually then update the information relating to what we need there in the power pack and there we go it's added the the, the parameters into um, the engineering item table so what i can do is i can choose to export to autocad in here we can do that and then these instantly as you can see that was very very quick it's exported all my three drawings in here um, straight out okay then what it will actually do is it will actually create let's come back into here and this is a collaboration project so obviously it is a cloud-based one so we'll just go to my user folder uh, my app data we can go to local and then we can go to Autodesk. What? Plant 3D, collaborate, and it's called challenge. So here's a challenge one. Now, if I go to the Plant 3D models, what you'll actually find in here, it's created. So where we had the example layout, it's now created an example layout underscore ACAD. DWG. that is the one that we want so this is the one now that's turned it into just a box standard native um, dwg so any product that needs to actually access a, a standard um, dwg doesn't have the object to neighbor for the plant 3d content is going to be able to open that file um, and because it just does it so quickly you know it's such an easy tool to run um, and all that information is available and you've got that basic DWG. So if someone needs it for collaboration, BIM workflows, coordination, um, then we have that information readily at hand. Okay. There's various other tools that we have in here, like the sync actuators. This is going to look for the actuators to go with the pumps and add them in automatically. Again, saving you time. If you want to find a PNIDs, we can actually click on there and it will then start to, when it loads up, it will give me a little box so I can actually select objects and it will then start to find the PNID associated to them objects as well okay really really easy to use interface with some absolutely amazing time saving tools along with a few little extras down on the modeling which I've mentioned where we have the ability to update parts so it will substitute a model part for the closest item in the spec base of the item code okay um, if that's not available we can update the spec record ids and we also have the list part information tool as well in here i hope that's been useful and that you can see the benefits and the productivity gains that you can have with the power pack for plant 3d and as i mentioned earlier you know we, we will be releasing updates to this hopefully um, to 
um, every six months there will be a new version available if you've got any ideas things that you would like to see within that power pack please do get in touch at simon.dickinson at greatech.com if you do have any questions i will be um, hanging around here for the um, next 15 minutes so please ask your questions and i'll do my best to answer them thank you